<sighs> hey everyone, welcome back. Another anime review. This is an anime that I finished literally in two days. <laughs> I watched the uh, dub of it, and I thought it was amazing. Granted, it does this does have its noticeable flaws, which I'll obvi I obviously mention. Generally, they just revolve around one specific character, which I'll talk about, of course. I mean, he's the main character, but I'll get to that later. I am, of course, talking about Fate Stay Night. Now, I've not yet seen Fate Zero. Everyone I like talked to about it says that Fate Zero is so much superior, which is why I can't wait to, wait to jump into Fate Zero. Because... Well, if I love this series so much, and Fate Zero is supposedly superior, I'm probably going to jizz myself the entire fucking time, okay? Anyways, though. <sighs> Where should I begin? Ah, yes, this specific. Well, first off, I'd like to say that yesterday I actually watched ten episodes, okay? Today, I watched the rest. This morning. Seriously, I started literally at the break of the morning. It's 10, it's really 11.09 uh, a.m. right now. I've already finished watching the final 14 episodes. So yeah, you can probably tell how much I love it. And I really, well, if, it, if I was watching it subbed, I probably wouldn't be able to do that because during downtime scenes, I could just like listen to it and do other stuff on my computer. But I'd obviously have to read subtitles if, it was, if I was watching it sub. So I'm glad I was watching it dub. I really hope the Fate Zero Hawk has a dub already. I'll get to the dub um, later, because whenever there's a dub, I, I do like to talk about it, even though I don't really factor that into my recommendations, whether it's her, whether it's the best dub ever, whether it's just okay, whether it's really good, whether it's horrendous, you know. But anyways, though, let's just get to the specifics about the series first. It was directed by Yuji Yamaguchi and produced by Studio Dean, and, well, it's... That's all the inf information about who worked on it. God damn it. And no news, no composer, no writer. Um, okay. <laughs> and it originally ran from January 6, 2006 to June 16, 2006. That's a total of 24 episodes in the end. <sighs> Where should I start with this series? Well... Let's talk about the plot first, I suppose. A uh, story revolves around our main character, main character Shiro Emiya. I'll get to him in a minute. When he was a child, he was basically inside of a large fire, in which everyone else was there, which supposedly there was hundreds, maybe even thousands of people died, but he ended up living because he was saved by a man known as... What was his name? I don't remember. But this man ended up saving him and adopting him. And very quickly, Emiya ended up seeing him as his father. Uh, because of how much he looked at, this man looked after him. And I'm still trying to look for his name. Uh, wait. No. Alright, it's Kiritsutsu Emiya. Okay. And so this man basically became his father. However, and the Shiro learned later on that he that his father is actually a mage, and so Chiritsu, God damn it, <laughs> ends up teaching him reinforcement magic so he can basically use magic to fix household appliances. Obviously, no one else knows about that. They just think that he's a master with working with appliances like that and whatnot. Um, but really, he's actually using magic for that, which I think is kind of cool, actually. And his father actually died sometime before the start of the series. We don't learn why till later on. However, when... One day, Shiro ends up meeting a... Basically, two magical warriors fighting to the death. One ends up spotting him and chasing after him and almost killing him until... Until a... Brown haired girl by the name of, I can't believe I don't remember the name of these fucking characters. And she's such a major character, too. God damn it. Lynn! 
to Tosaka. I'll call her Tosaka. When a girl named Tosaka comes in, basically uses magic to save his life. However, he ends up being almost killed again until another girl named Saber ends up literally appearing out of nowhere and saving his life again. Although this time I don't think he was actually attacked. No, he was just... She just came and saved him, basically. Basically, he in involuntarily summoned her there. Sometime after that, we learn that he has been selected as being what's known as a, a master to f and in order to fight in what's known as the Holy Grail War in order to obtain an artifact known as the Holy Grail. Not the mythological thing of Christ and whatnot that you see in a lot of fiction. No, this is just another thing that looks like a chalice too that goes by the same name, which can grant any one wish to both the master and servant who obtained it. The servant of Emia being Saber. And so then, although Emia is reluctant at first, after learning that his father was also a master in the previous Holy Grail War ten years prior to the start of the series, and that he and that, and that that was the cause of the fire that he almost died in, he decides to reluctantly fight in order to put him into the wars once and for all by destroying the Holy Grail. And that basically starts our story. And each uh, master, which is seven masters supposedly, has one servant which they summon to them to fight for them. Uh, and his servant is um, Saber. And... Rin's servant, actually, because she's in it as well, is was actually one of the two uh, warriors that he saw fighting that time, although not it wasn't the one who attacked him, it was the other one. His name is uh, Archer. Okay, so basically there's seven masters and seven servants, and they have to fight to the death, and the last two get each of their wishes granted, supposedly. And that's the plot of the series. Now, first off, I have to say that the plot is quite original, I think. Um, I mean, it's a fantasy... Ro it's a fantasy romance series, and there's lots of them out there, but I thought that it was very unique how this one came about, and the actual overall plot. More than just it's m people with magic fighting each other, you know. More than just that. And so that's, so that's one of the reasons I really like it. Although I always say that originality means nothing to me, I will still compliment something if it is original. And this was quite original. It did have lots of cliches in it, but I thought that the overall premise of the plot was very original, and I really liked that. Now, a lot of people say they don't like this series, and mo usually the reason why I hear this is because they're comparing it to Fate Zero. I want to say right now, I have not yet watched Fate Zero. The reason, well, mainly because I've heard people say that, watch this first, or because if you watch Fate Zero first and watch this, you'll probably hate it. Most people, no matter which villain they watched first and second, still hate it, but I love this as I watch it first. I've never read the, uh, or I've never play, played the visual novel, by the way. So, I don't know, know anything about that. I've heard that it's much better. I don't care because I've never played it. I might sometime in the future but I haven't as of yet. Uh, well, I might, because, I mean, I've never played a visual novel before, but I might. Anyway, so. So, what are all the good points about this series? Well, the plot I already mentioned. In addition, I also really like the characters. Except for one. And we finally came to this part of the review. When I get to rant on the main char character himself, Hero Enya. <sighs> okay. Hero Enya. Really, he, his character had potential if they added more depth to him, but really, I think he's kind of a bland character. Not really bland. He's not, okay, he's not really a bland character, but he's just so fucking irritating. Okay, basically he's a kind-hearted and honest teenager who always enjoys helping others. Nothing wrong with that, fine. I don't understand that myself, but fine. If you want to put that as a character trait in your fucking character, fine. Okay, 
But then what else? Well, he's ex extraordinarily naive. He re honestly, like, to describe how stupid he is, Oh my god, like, I could go on for hours about how fucking retarded this goddamn character is. But I'm not gonna make this a ten hour long video. So let me just try to summarize it the best that I can, okay? He honestly constantly throws himself in front of, in Han's way to save fucking, uh, Saber. And honestly thinks that she's just a defenseless girl who shouldn't be throwing whistling swords around. Okay, listen up, Emiya. Okay, let's get this stuff from the straight here, alright? Saber is a mystical warrior, warrior from fucking legend. She is King Arthur. The only thing special about you is that you have a little bit of magic that can reinforce and basically fix household appliances. Get the picture. Oh my god. I have, it's been a long time since I've matched a main character so fucking, it's irritating as this. I mean, god damn it. And contrary, like, Saber's my favorite character. I love Saber, like, everyone tell, tell me how awesome Saber is. I couldn't agree more. Saber is an amazing fucking character. I felt sorry that she had to have a master as fucking stupid and dim-witted as fucking Emiya, okay? He sucks. That being said, as for all the other characters, it was none that I really disliked. I liked every single one of them. Even the main villains, I really liked. Even though they didn't really have much depth or anything, I'm willing to look past that, mainly because, A, I don't really think that's a requirement. If it's there, that's nice, but I don't personally see that as a requirement. But, also, the, um... Like, they're not really revealed as villains until the, uh, final few episodes, except for, like, Gilgamesh, who's revealed as a villain, I think, before episode 20, if I'm not mistaken. But, but still, I still really like all of them, because they're, they're villains, and they're, and they play the villain role very well, including, uh, well, this is in, like, the uh, main... Wait. Damn it. It's like the main villain, I can't remember. Oh, for fuck. Uh, god damn it. Well, he's the main villain. Let's just put it that way. The main villain I also really like too, he's basically the one who actually killed, uh, Emiya's father. Which we don't learn until like, the second to last episode, or maybe it was the last episode, something like that. Okay. Which I thought was really interesting, too. So, Emiya actually did have a motive for killing him. Multiple motives for killing him, because it was his fault that the fire broke out. <laughs> you know. Basically, he was the undesirable one who obtained the Holy Grail in the past war. Anyways, though. But other than Anya, I really enjoyed all the char these characters. Especially... Saber. Hmm. I think I actually have a waifu now. I mean... I've never had one in the past, but I think I actually have one now. I love Saber so fucking much. <sighs> okay, don't lose your grip on reality. Don't lose your grip on reality. Okay, now, moving on from that, though, really, in terms of characters, the only problem, I, the only issue I had was Emiya. Moving on from that, though, that's it for the, really the plot and the characters, okay? Now let's talk about the music. The music in the series was amazing, and it had so much variety. There was violins, there was, like, pianos, or maybe it was keyboards. I kind of had the difference telling the, between the two. It could have been either one, or maybe both, who knows. You know, there was guitars, there was all sorts of things, you know. There were, uh, flutes, I think, at points as well. There was all sorts of things in the soundtrack, and it all blended together so perfectly. And also, the... 
both of the openings and both of the endings were out fucking standing, especially that first opening. Oh my god. Okay. I know, I'm sounding really weird. I love this series so much. Whew. Um, damn it. I'm trying to find who sung the Athenians. Uh. Can't find who sung the Athenians. Wait. Uh. Oh well. Anyways, though. Now let's talk about the animation and art. First off, I really did love the art. It's my favorite type of art in, in an anime. It seems like very smooth and very crisp and whatnot. But that animation... Okay, it wasn't perfect animation. There were a lot of still frames, sliding frames, and stuff like that. A little bit of cut corners, but not too much. And when it really got into the fights, the animation there was fucking phenomenal. Okay. Really, and I've heard that the animation is even better than Fate Zero's, like, pretty much everything according to what people tell me, so I couldn't even fucking imagine. <clears throat> anyway, and that pretty much sums up my review of Fate's Day Night. Fate's Day Night, I thought, was an amazing anime. Now, first of I, I would like to say, I don't know what the meaning of the title is. I guess, like, they were trying to play off subtleties, like, okay, maybe it was fate that Emiya and, and uh, Saber would meet each other. Maybe that was it. Okay. But what a, but Stay Night? I mean, I can buy the fate thing, if, it's, if that's the case, but Stay Night? I don't fucking know where that comes from at all. Okay. Also, the ending has to be talked about I won't spoil it for you, but the ending is extremely fucking sad and kind of depressed me a little bit. Like, and I felt thought it was kind of weird because at first Saber wanted the Holy Grail so that she could basically undo the sin that she committed as king. But later on, she, after learning how evil that the Holy Grail really is, she decides that she doesn't want to. She just wants to destroy it. However, by destroying it, she could have actually. Uh, she actually ended up disappearing, okay? I kind of just spoil it for you, goddammit. But, oh, who, oh, well. I only say my reviews are full of spoilers, so who gives a shit? <clears throat> Anyways, though. But, Emiya knew that, he hold, that if she drank from the Holy Grail, she could stay by his side forever. Now, I'm not saying he should have used one of his command skills to force her to. I'm saying he should have at least mentioned it to her, because by that time, Emiya had already confessed his love for Saber, and just before she disappeared, Saber confessed his, her love for him. So before she destroyed the Holy Grail, she obviously would have known that she loved him. So why Emiya wouldn't have just told her and maybe, she, so she could at least know and then choose from that? I don't know. I mean, really, if she, if she loved him that much, you'd think that if there was a way for, him to, for her to stay with him there forever, not as, like, master and servant, but as equals, perhaps, then she would have done it, you know? If she knew that there was a way. But I don't think she knew that there was a way, way. Okay. And that's something I really didn't get about the ending. I really didn't like too much. But the ending was still really good, I thought. Like, overall. It, albeit extremely fucking sad. Okay? Anyways, though. I think that just about wrapped up my review of Fate's Day Night. Excellent series, despite the flaws, which I didn't mention. You know, a few animation flips here and there, albeit not too many. And also, MEA is a fucking character. Despite that, I still love this series and definitely recommend it, and I can't wait to watch Fate Zero because of how much I love this series, okay? Anyways, overall, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.